my father used to say, look, Dave, every day you wake up and you're not feeling the wood sides, which is the coffin, obviously, <laughs> you're having a good day. So make it happen because there'll be a time when you can't. What inspired you to create your community bank? Well, late 2008, early 2009, my minibus customers were coming along to me as they had done for years and years and years. And they wanted finance for the bus. I used to fill the forms in, send them off to the local bank, and the banks would then give me the money and the customer would get the bus. But guess what? That all stopped. And it stopped overnight. The banks just stopped lending to the customers. And I thought, have they done something wrong? Have they got a problem? Have they got a CCJ? And you know what? They do nothing wrong. The banks literally stopped giving money out. So I thought, either I stop selling minibuses, which would be a problem. I'm the largest supplier of minibuses in the country. Or if I'm leaving these people, why don't I lend them the money? They pay me back. They get the bus. We'll try that. So that's what I did. And you know what? People paid me back. Business have paid me back. There's nothing wrong with a great British public in this country. The problem is the banks. So I thought, well, okay, can I make things bigger? Can I then start lending to other businesses that aren't related to the minibus business? I thought, I'll start a bank. So I started lending money to people. They started paying me back. And I thought, this banking malarkey, it's not that difficult. So that's why I set off on this challenge. And it proved to be a huge one. What did you learn from the experience of creating Bank on Dave? What I learned about creating Bank of Dave is if you put your mind to it, you can achieve anything. If I can inspire people, that would be wonderful. And in life, I've got like a set of rules and four of them are really important. Rule number one is never lose money. And rule number two is never forget rule number one. But rule number three and four are super important. Rule number three is you must never give up. And rule number four, the most important rule of all, is you must never, ever give up. Put one foot in front of the other and just keep going. Because when you're going after a financial institution, you're up against the massive regulators, you're up against the world's banking systems, and everybody's trying to stop you. You must never give up. Just keep pushing. There's always, always a way. Using confidence and self-belief. If you haven't got enough self-belief or enough confidence, then I can help you. I can teach you. I didn't, and I wasn't born with self-belief and confidence. Nobody is. But you learn how to use it, how to gain it. And in my talks, I can actually physically teach you confidence and self-belief. And if I can do it, anybody can. What can businesses learn from your community first approach to banking? There's always a way in life for everything. You must think outside the box. One of the things I like to talk about in my talks is how people can learn to communicate better. If you can communicate better, you are going to add at least 50 to 100% to your network. I can teach you how to communicate. I had no skills at all when I started, but I can definitely teach you how to make this happen. So communicating is super important. Most people are stuck in a box in a business. They end up doing everything themselves. For instance, if you're a hairdresser, you're sweeping up, you're cleaning up, you're taking all the phone calls, you're cutting people's hair, you're doing the perms, you're doing the accounts, you're doing everything. And what I'd like to do is I like to come along and teach people how to step outside the box, look inside and see where things are maybe going wrong or things can be done better or differently. And then I can help you move on to the second and third and fourth business rather than being stuck in the first one. So that's the big answer to this question is learning to step outside the box and seeing how you can then move on to the second. Because the faster I can make you redundant in that first business, the quicker I can get you onto the second, third, fourth, and you become a multi-business company. Like I started with one business and now I've got six. I built six multi-million pound businesses from scratch in all different departments, 
you know, from property to media to banking to vehicles to leasing to, to land, acquiring land, leasing land out. And the big one is in America. My biggest company is in America. It's an investment company. I'm self-taught. And that's the biggest thing I've got. So I can teach you to do it in this country or two and a half thousand miles away. The choice is yours. You grew the UK's largest supplier of minibuses. What personal qualities do you credit to your success? Um, my father, he worked so hard. He was a farm labourer in the morning from six o'clock in the morning till two o'clock in the afternoon. And then he'd walk down to the local mill and he'd work in the mill as a tackler. That's somebody who fixes looms. And he worked there from two o'clock till 10. That's the afternoon shift. So he worked day and night, seven days a week, and never, ever stopped. My mum was a weaver. I come from an incredibly poor family, but a hard working family. You know, and I think that is what I credit with the work ethic. Because if you've got a work ethic and you try hard every day, my old dad used to say, and he's passed away from Parkinson's now and I miss him dearly, but my father used to say, look Dave, every day you wake up and you're not feeling the wood sides, which is the coffin obviously, <laughs> you're having a good day. So make it happen. Because there'll be a time when you can't. So I have that in the back of my mind. And I'm healthy each day and I really thank the Lord for that. So every day I wake up and I'm not feeling the wood sides. Let's make it happen. We sell buses all over the world and, and I sell them. I'm even, I've even supplied the Gurkhas at the bottom of Everest because nobody else would. And we found a way of making it happen, you know. And the thing is, like I always say, just think outside the box. There's always a way. And if you're not sure, just drop me a tweet, you know, at Fishwick David, you know, and, and ask me. Or I'm the business doctor in the Mail Online, which is the biggest digital newspaper in the world. And people write me questions all the time. And I've never, ever got, been to school or anything. I've not been to business school. I've not been to college or university because when I left school, I left school absolutely useless. I didn't have the price of a chip butter. I had no qualifications whatsoever. And I couldn't go to college or university and get in there because my parents need me to work to contribute. So that's where I went, 16 years old, straight onto a building site as a builder's labourer on less than £30 a week, which was the YTS back then, which was the youth training scheme. So I was there, up and down ladders, bucket of cement in each hand, working really hard 10, 12 hour days for less than a tenner a day. And that's how life started. And when you start with nothing, how do you turn nothing into something? And I think this is a really good question. And I wanted to get involved in cars. I loved cars, Megan. But I didn't have the price of a chip butter. I didn't have the price of a gallon of petrol. So how do you start a business with nothing? And I thought, think outside the box. If I go around all the car garages that are selling newish cars, they're going to be taking really old ones in pot exchange. Perhaps one of them will let me take one away and sell it for them. And I tried loads until I found one that did. And it was on Bath Street in Nelson. The garage is still there today. And he let me take an old car away and clean it up and bring him back an organised amount of money. He wanted £70 returning. Now, this is 35 years ago. So £70 was still an amount of money, but he trusted me. So I took it away. I cleaned it up. I sold it. I advertised it for 100 quid. I got £97 for it, which were 27 quid profit, even with my bad Burnley maths. And that 27 quid back then were almost a week's wages. So I thought, Eureka! Straight back up to the guy's house, paid him the £70. Can I do it again? Of course you can, Dave. You paid me. And I did it again and again and again until I learned another important lesson, which is once you've got enough money up front, you can negotiate a much better deal. And that's how the business empire started. What do you hope audiences take away from your public speeches? What I would love the audience to take away from, from, from the talks that I do with you is um, I would love the audience to take away inspiration. If you're watching one of my movies or one of my documentaries or listening to one of my talks, or, or I'd love to answer some questions at the end of it as well. So if you want to bring some questions with you, do that. I love questions at the end. So what I'd love you to take away is inspiration. Whether you want to start a bank of your own, whether you want to start a financial institution, whether you want to do something within the community, run by the community to benefit the community rather than the bonus culture, whether you want to go for a new job, whether you want to go for a promotion, 
whether you want to have children, whatever you're going to do, let's do it tomorrow. Let's make it happen. Let's start that process. Because if you've got the courage to follow your dreams, you can make anything happen. And remember what my dad said, you know, do it now because there'll be a time when you can't. So together, let's make it happen.